Hi, boys and girls. Uh, we are doing lesson 6-4, partial quotients division. Um, and I remember the first video I ever did for distance learning for my class last year was actually on this topic. Um, so I'm doing it again, and I'll actually share the old one with you too. Um, because maybe I messed up at this time, or maybe the other one I said it a little different. Um, I'll also share a video um, from other sources too, just so you can kind of see different perspectives on how to use this method in division. This is a big lesson. That's why I'm making a video on it. So the question I'd like you to work on solving, I hope you already did solve it um, in the pair deck. And the question was, the art club is making a rectangular mural for the gym wall. They have 98 square foot tiles. If the club members want the mural to be seven feet long how tall will it be so the key numbers we have here are 98 and seven and what are we doing with them we're dividing so let's jump over to my cami paper and i'm hoping that it works pretty well um, today and we're going to do um 98 divided by seven equals m. That's gonna be our number model, our equation. Um, but we are going to be thinking about this problem in a couple different ways. Um, I would like you to think about this in the form of what the actual picture has to do with, a rectangle. And we're gonna talk about how we use, sometimes we're gonna be using what we call area models um, or partitioned rectangles to help us understand the uh, problems, okay? So we are going to take our little drawing tools here. I'm gonna insert a rectangle, and I'm gonna draw out a rectangle that I imagine oops, is going to be like this kind of shape. Now, is it perfect? No. Do I have exactly, you know, 98 squares here with this grid paper? No, that would not be a good use of my time. But we're gonna kind of estimate, we're gonna kind of get a sense of what it is, right? So we have seven, oops, forgot to switch back. We have seven on this side, and our whole area is 98, right? So that is the whole area. And I'm not writing anything in the middle here because I want to, Kind of break down this number into smaller pieces. And we're going to be thinking about our multiples of seven. So over on this side of the paper, I am going to draw a nice straight line using my drawing tool. And I showed you this the other day. I did one, two, three, and I'm making a quick little multiple table for the number we're dividing by. And I'm just going one through nine because I can extend any of these facts any further than I want, right? So we're gonna have a seven, we're gonna have a 14, a 21, a 28, a 35, 42, 49, 50, six and 63. So this is our set of multiples of seven. Now, the next step is asking ourselves, all right, 98, if I were to extend any of these facts, where would it fall? What numbers would it fall in between? And then that's gonna give us a good starting place to think about solving the problem. So. If I extended these facts, if I added a zero to any of these numbers, I'd get 70, 140, 210, 280, right? And I'm going to do that in a different color just so we can kind of see that, right? Right, I'm extending the facts of zeros here, right? And I am nearly out of space on this paper, but that's okay. Now. Where does 98 fall if I extended them just by tens, right? 
So I have 10 times 7 is 70. 20 times 7 is 140. 98 is in between those two numbers. So that's right away a good idea about how to estimate our answer, right? We can say to ourselves that our answer is going to be between 10 and 20, okay? So back to what we're going to do here. So 98 divided by 7. And I'm going to build my division problem like this, making a little box around the number, putting the number I'm dividing by. This looks exactly like our long division method, except I'm adding in this extra line. And we're going to get back to this in a second. Uh, but right away, we're going to say to ourselves, all right, so what's a good number that we can say that we have definitely a certain number of sevens that uh, kind of fit into this 98, right, without going past 98. Well, we can start with this 70. Um, and what we're going to do is kind of take this rectangle tool again. If I turn on the rectangle tool, <laughs> and I am going to visualize a little bit about how much that 70 is, right? I'm going to put that right about there. And I'm going to say that, all right, so I have, hmm. <laughs> let's try that again. Um, I have 10 by 7 so far to make 70, right? And then what do I have left after I do that? Um, well, if I did 98 minus 70, I would say, all right, I had, oops, let's try that again. I multiplied 10 times 7. I'm going to get 78. And this is how we're drawing up the partial products or partial quotients method, right? So when I create this problem, I'm going to ask myself, right, what's a number that's just below 98 um, that I can easily start off with that I multiply by the number we're dividing by? And we did 10. 10 times 7 is 70. So I'm going to write my 10 here, and I'm going to write 70 here. And it kind of looks like this. I took up 70 tiles with 10 rows of uh, sevens, right? And so now we got to figure out what's left over in this bottom rectangle. And we're going to subtract away the 70 from that 98. And we have 8, and then we have... 20. All right, so 28. Now, I'm going to go back to my multiple table. It's so much easier when we just do this quick little rundown of our multiples, right? And I can look and see if I have a number that's close to this new number that we're trying to figure out how many sevens kind of fit into 28 uh, without going over. And Sometimes we actually have a number that's exactly that, 28, right? So how many sevens make 28? Four. So we're going to take four, and we're going to multiply. You know, I'm going to do a new color. I like mixing up the colors because I can. I'm going to choose cyan, and I'm going to do four times seven is 28. And now I have none left. And in my rectangle, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to make a rectangle here like that to kind of show that I have now 28 here. And that was four of those rows of seven. So I had four rows of seven for 28, and then I had 10 rows of seven to make 70. And all together, that makes the 98, all right? And how much is that all together? Well, we take those two numbers, 10 and 4, and we add them together to get 14. And in this case, we had nothing left over. Uh, we had a 0. And 
when we are dividing, when we are going through this process of uh, partial quotients, we are going to try to take away the multiples of that number that we're dividing by. We're going to take, we took away 10 to start with from the 98. We had 28 left. And then we took away four more sevens. That was 28. And we ended up with zero left. Now, anytime we ended up with a number that is smaller than the number we're dividing by, then we have to stop. And we have to say to ourselves, all right, we can't take away any more sevens from that number. Uh, we have what we call a remainder. And in this case, our remainder is zero, right? And there are different ways we can write the remainder. We could write it as a fraction. Uh, there are decimal ways to write a remainder. For in this case, we're just going to write remainder is zero. We have no more leftover tiles here. So our answer would be 14. Let's just double check that question, right? Let's go back and double check that question. Ooh, whoa, whoa. There we go. So the question was, if the club members want the mural to be seven feet long, how tall will it be? Well, the question is in feet, right? And so the answer should be in feet. And I was thinking about like rows of tiles, right? So I almost wrote rows of tiles and that would not necessarily have been a correct uh, answer um, because we have to be more specific. We have to say actually the size of those tiles or we just need to say the actual length, right? Or the height. Uh, so we're going to be doing instead, our answer is going to be 14 feet. All right, and they are kind of set in tiles, but anyway, there you go. So that is the partial quotients method. And we're gonna be practicing this a lot because this is a really important step in learning division. And what we're gonna do is um, browse at other videos. We have a video in our uh, Everyday Math online. If we click the tutorial video, and you scroll down, I already scrolled down before, and it was page 113, or actually, um, we gotta go keep into this section, actually, number up op in operations. Where did it go? It was right there. Anyway, it is right near the, the methods of different, Methods. Here we go. Partial quotients, page 113. I, was, I just looked right past it. Anyway, if we click on that, there are a couple different videos here. One here, one there. That will help you. And then there's a really cool little tool here that will help you kind of see this in a different way, too. So I clicked on that main part. And if we click number four here, introducing partial quotients division, uh, we're going to be able to use this tool to help you with kind of working through the steps of solving partial quotients. And it takes a little while to load, but here it is. And this first problem is 72 divided by four. And what you'll do is you say to yourself, how many fours should we subtract from 72? And we can work on our own space and multiply out the multiples of four. Um, but I'm going to start off with kind of an easy one, right? I'm going to start off with 10. 10 by 4, right? And we hit enter. And it shows right away that there's a space taken up, right? And how much do we subtract in total? Well, what's 10 times 4 is really the piece here. They inserted the 10 on the side. And then, yes, 10 times 4 is 40. So we're going to insert that there. And it also appears there. And then how much left is after subtracting? 72 minus 40 is 32. And then they will have us go to the next step. And when you click the next step, next step, we wait. Oops. 
Right, I had to hit start first. Anyway, the next step is now replacing that number. It says, how many four should we subtract from 32? And some of you may know that eight fours actually equals 32. And look, it fills up the rest of that rectangle. And if you do, we can actually use our number keys as well. You can enter that. And then how much is left over after subtracting? And there is zero left, so we can stop because it's smaller than four. And then our next step is how many four should we subtract from zero? That doesn't make sense, right? So at this point, we're going to click finish. Okay. And when you click finish, it then said, how many total fours did you subtract? And you add up the numbers on the side. And we have 18, and then we have zero as our remainder. And we check our answer by clicking actually check, and it says correct. All right, so that is something I'd like you to play with just to test this out. Um, I'm not sure if there actually is another way, another problem, or if I just did the one that you could do. Um, but this is a good kind of way to show that. Um, so I'm hoping that they can actually regenerate a few more problems for you with this. Um, but that is that. I'm going to be sharing my old video. I'm going to be sharing this one and also share one from Khan Academy. And check out the everyday math ones too. Uh, there's lots of different ways that people think about partial quotients, but I think this is a really good method for division. And it's going to be really helpful, especially if you create your little multiple tables on the side of your paper. All right. So that is going to be something I'm asking you to do to start. All right. I will see you tomorrow and have a wonderful day.